Senator Rhiannon. Uh, thank you, um, Deputy President. Well, it sounds like the Cold War has returned. Australia's at risk. The nation's under threat. Foreign agents abound, threatening our democracy. Possibly they've taken the place of the Reds under the bed. Clearly, action must be taken, but fortunately, the major parties are here yet again to save us. They're collaborating, and it's nothing new for Labor, Liberal and Nationals to collaborate when it comes to so-called national security measures. Since 2002, can you believe it? You probably can, sadly. 67 pieces of legislation, so-called national security bills, have come here, and Liberal, Labor, Nationals all lining up to pass it together with insufficient security, massive overreach time and time again. Now, I acknowledge that only six of those 67 bills have come from Labor, but Labor just comes on board every time the coalition government, a coalition government uses the word national security. Oh, they've got to take a stand. The erosion of our democratic processes, the fundamental way this country works, have been eroded for well over a decade now because of this so-called national security scare. And it is being misused for the benefit of a certain section of this society. And um, Senator Richard Di Natale named that so clearly, and did Senator Nick McKim when he spoke on this about the corporate interests. The, and particularly in this bill here, the way the voice, the way the voice of so many organisations will be curtailed, despite the amendments that went through the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security. Their recommendations have put forward a number of amendments. Um, some of them are useful, but still. These bills are irresponsible. One, as um, Senator McKim set out, we should have had the opportunity to be able to send it to a Senate committee. But we know that we've got a big problem with this legislation because of the way it's been structured. I mean, just going back to my theme about reds under the bed, or, or we're foreign agents in this case, isn't it? Now, like, seriously. What you're left to conclude with is all these foreign agents are concluding as climate activists, human rights advocates, many others working to make it a fairer, greener world, because it's the organisations, the charities have now been looked after. That's good. We welcome that. But there's a whole number of not-for-profit organisations that are out there advocating on so many important issues. Now, probably I, some of my colleagues, we wouldn't agree with them all, but that's not the issue. The issue is having the right to go out there and express yourself, take action, protest. But now the limitations and the penalties are quite extraordinary. So we shouldn't back these bills. Under no circumstances should that be the next step. Now, former Senator Scott Ludlam writing in The Guardian today, really summed it up. The government is quite deliberately turning national security into a weapon with which to protect corporate interests and attack its opponents. Their former Senator Ludlam's words in The Guardian today, and I recommend that senators read his full article. It really does unpack the bill and pinpoints what a serious stage we are at in this country not dissimilar from the unravelling of democracy that we're seeing in a number of countries—England, Hungary, the US. Like, shocking things are happening, often in the name of democracy, often in the name of national security. But it's an overreach, and it's an overreach in, in the interests of a very narrow section of society. That section of society that the coalition government backs, that section of society that is committed to making profits. Why do they want to curtail civil society? Because they don't want to have to deal with protests and actions. They want to just get on and make their money, not have to worry about environmental standards, not have to worry about abiding by workplace safety measures, etc. They want to just be able to get on and do the job. And I know somebody will probably come back and say, well, unions are exempt. But the way the industrial relations is going in this country, it's still damn hard for um, people to be able to get their voice heard. So it is deeply shocking that Labor has gone, gone uh, um, along with these bills. They've abrogated their role um, as a party of opposition. They've abrogated their role in the Senate 
where clearly we have a specific job to do here, a job to look at these bills when they come before us, but it's been denied denied to all senators because of a deal stitched up as a way to fast-track this legislation as quickly as possible this week, and we're right in the midst of it now because the, deal, the deal's in. Now, what we've heard from Labor senators is—and they're trying to hang their hat on these 280 amendments. I mean, that's just an embarrassment uh, to try and make out that that's the solution here. But the danger still lurks within these bills. So take the Foreign Influence Transparency Scheme. The term foreign political organisation is retained. Now, this is a really big problem with this bill. And if Labor senators can't see this, I'm sure some of them can, um, they're not being honest if they're not bringing that forward in the debate and at least acknowledging something needs to be done here rather than just giving a tick. Oh, we've got all our amendments. Everything's OK. Just put it through. Foreign agents, well, we really do want to grab foreign agents because they're bad people, without looking at the definition of who we're capturing. Because the term, as I've said, is extremely broad and it's too ambiguous. And this is where we can see how so many public interests, not-for-profit groups that are not charities, can be captured. This really goes to the essence of the major problem with what we're dealing with here. And when I say that, when I'm talking about groups that are public interests, not-for-profits, I'm thinking of so many of the organisations that I work with, organisations that are um, refugee support groups doing extra extraordinary work activist groups in other countries. And I'm about to go through a whole number of areas of work, which are a very rich part of our society. But what it reminds you of is in this day and age, advocacy, protests, actions are global. And this lends a madness to what we're dealing with here. And, but the, but it's a madness from my point of view, a serious intent from the coalition government, because they do want to capture, they do want to capture and silence um, the voice of so many of these groups. <clears throat> so think of all those organisations here and in other countries that took action on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Now that was a collaboration between a range of organisations. Sometimes even government group groupings were involved as well, as understanding of the um, seriousness of that piece of so-called free trade legislation that it had to be taken on, um, and this broad global alliance was built up. Well, what happens to all those people in Australia? Do they have to then be declaring that they're foreign agents? Uh, another recent one that came to mind. I, I um, spoke about. Uh, no, we had a motion about this one because it's a 50-year anniversary of the tragic factory collapse in Bangladesh. Groups in Bangladesh, organisations here, in many other countries, have worked together, um, highlighting the problems with the Bangladeshi government. But there's all sorts of interactions going on there. Again, these are the sorts of people that can be co um, covered. Um, a, very, a very interesting one is cruel cosmetics. We have legislation before the parliament about that issue, about ending the testing um, of cosmetics and cosmetics ingredients on animals. Now, the organisations that we're working with, the Humane Society International and other groups, they're working with uh, governments and organisations around the world to advance um, these legal changes needed to outlaw cruel cosmetics in other countries. Now, they'd be assert to be captured by what's going on here purely because of the very fine work that they're, they're doing, but because of the loose um, term foreign political organisation, they, they could well be captured. Um, the Great Barrier Reef is another one that these days is an issue that's been taken up by non-government organisations. Um, many international organisations, and at times other governments are taking an interest in this. So again, the complexities here that this bill does not deal with are very serious, and it, the, this um, Senate needs to be very mindful of it. So I did want to just go back to the, the, some of the work of the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence Sec Security. Now, the PJCIS recommendations, as I've said, did not satisfactorily address both the definition of p political organisations or the term acting on behalf of. Now, 
again, I, I really wanted to give emphasis to this, because if we can't deal with that, this, these bills, both of them, need to be rejected, because they, they go hand in hand. It, it, this matter is so serious, and this is what we need, need to take on board. Um, groups that are not registered charities may remain exposed under this bill because of the failure of these sections. <coughs> and to repeat again, and to repeat again, that's because of the definition of foreign principle and the treatment of acting. Um, this is the quote from the um, legislation or, or, uh, at one stage. Acting on behalf of acting on behalf of and the foreign principle are those key terms because they they remain problematically broad like simply something has to be done about them and we need to ensure that we accept amendment on those key areas now i understand that one of the recommendations has been that to redefine the phrase foreign political organisation to include only foreign political parties or organisations that fill candidates in parliamentary elections. So there are proposals around, and Senator Nick McKim will bring, them for, bring those f forward as we do have amendments in this, um, in this debate. But again, it has been so hard to grapple with it, with the speed with which this has been rushed through. Again, to emphasise 280 recommend um, amendments to legislation when, when we only saw them yesterday afternoon is a shocking way to deal with, with the situation before us. So I um, do congratulate my colleagues, Senator Richard Di Natale, Senator Nick McKim, have really set out the major problems we have with this legislation. It needs to be. It should have gone to the Senate committee. Now it should not be rushed through, and amendments need to be made so we ensure that this whole issue of foreign agents don't further cripple our civil society and our democratic practices. Thank you, Deputy President.